Previously on Un Momento, Gabriela Sundar Singh, an actress with the Shaw Festival, and Chelsea on the CBC television sitcom series Kim's Convenience, talked about what it was like working alongside actors, including the star Simu Liu of the Marvel Studio blockbuster Shang-Chi. In part two of our interview, Gabriela talks about her experience as a guest on the hashtag Let Her Speak Tamil Women Rising event, alongside Netflix's Never Have I Ever star, Maitreyi Ramakrishnan, as well as what it was like to perform in the TV drama series The Next Step, featuring Bharatanatyam dancing. Enjoy the interview. I mean, and you have like, such a broad set of talents. I, I was looking at your, you know, IMDb and I was just like, wow, she's, <laughs> you know, you like all this experience, you know, um, to the point where I've even caught you in a Manulife advertisement on my television. <laughs> you, you actually caught it on TV? I caught it on TV. Wow. I did. I was like, oh my goodness, that's I, Gabriella. <laughs> I, I, I haven't even seen it um, live on TV yet. My parents... My parents have caught it like a couple dozen times and they record it and show it to me. Um, but I don't have cable here, so I've, I've seen recordings, but I've never seen it live. Oh, well, yes, it's 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 there. And I, I was looking back at some of the other shows. I noticed that you were in like the next step. So that's a super popular, you know, TV drama series. Um, that you were featured in and showcasing, you know, your classical training as a dancer. Looking back, what was it kind of like sharing your culture through art with many mm-hmm. young viewers kind of seeing it for the first time? Oh yeah, that, that project was so special to me. I was, I was the story intern for that first uh, full, that first season. Uh, so I got to be in the writer's room and watch the, watch the show go from these ideas to scripts to like, you know, production and, and watching it, watching it come together. That was, that was my first, I'm trying to think. Yeah, that was my first TV credit. That's my first foray into TV. Yes, it was. Yeah, it was. <laughs> and um, the, our, the showrunner, the creator, Frank Van Keeken was so generous because it was a show about dance. I was an intern on the show and I talked about it. I, I think I let it slip like once or twice that I was a I was a dancer and uh, and he ended up putting me in an episode and said, well, we want you to feature the thing that you know how to do um, and the style that is specific, you know, to you and want you to share that. And that was like, oh, man, I'm, I'm still floored that I even had that opportunity. Anytime I get to share Bardhanatyam with people is like, so special to me. Like my mom was a dancer growing up back home. Um, and, uh, you know, as soon as my sister and I were old enough, my mom put both her and I into Bardhanatyam classes and it's a style that connects me to my heritage. It connects me to my culture. It connects me to my family. It connects me to this whole, um, like web of dancers all over the world who are also classical Indian dancers. And there's so many different classical Indian styles. Like they're really like, there are so many. Uh, but when I meet another classical dancer, like there's just this there's just a bit of a, a connection because we know the kind of discipline that goes into it. We know how much time you have to invest into it. We know the kind of rigor it takes and how tough it is on your body. Um, and that's with anything. If you share like a dance or a sport or like an instrument, you play an instrument, when you meet somebody, you go, oh, you, you get it, right? Um, so anytime I get to share dance with the world, uh, is is like, it's such an honor, such an incredible honor for me. I, I've been lucky. Um, to be in spaces where I'm working with directors who really value um, the fact that I have a specific skill set that it's, it's not, it's not typical. This isn't the typical training that you need as a, as a dancer or actor in North America. It is very, it's, you know, it's, it's culturally specific, but I've worked with people who really, they see that and they value it and they give me the space to share it. So like, for instance, when I was doing my undergrad at the University of Guelph, in my final year, I did a production of Hamlet and I was playing Ophelia. And that was one of my first times, you know, doing a kind of bigger, intense role. And that was really exciting for me. And Judith Thompson was directing. And she, I think I'd done a bit of Bardanatium in my audition. Uh, she'd asked me, do you know what, do you have any, 
dance background or anything, any special skill or something you'd like to share. So I showed her some Bharatanatyam and then I ended up teaching the whole cast a, a little phrase of Bharatanatyam. And I think we opened and closed the show with that. And I also sang a song in Tamil, which is my, my parents' name, um, uh, my, like, one of my mother, my mother tongue besides English. And like, we got to do a production of Hamlet that had Bharatanatyam in it. And that was like, like, that was the, the coolest meeting of wor worlds and meeting of cultures that I could ever, that I could ever think of. And, and then I got the next step. And then even this year at the Shaw Festival, we are doing something called um, like the Shaw Grounds and the Fairgrounds, where all the ensemble members have gotten together and kind of, we're kind of pitching passion projects. And you can pitch anything you want to do. And then you can join someone's group. And some of them are like comedy, comedy sketch bits. Some, there's like some uh, stage combat. There's um, people who got to have gotten together and are playing music together. Um, there are a few dance pieces. And one of the pieces is a Bardanatia piece. And I, I think there's about eight of us now, random ensemble members who just, I pitched the idea and they signed up and I'm teaching them classical Bardanatia and we're going to perform it out outdoors a month, like in a garden and it's I gotta tell you Isabella it's so cool I I remember being asked once I've been asked more than once like what are you gonna do with Bharatanatyam like it's great but like it's great that you have this style but here in North America for most uh like for musical theater or for like you know typical auditions you need ballet you need jazz you need tap you, those are the that's what's needed what are you gonna do with Bharatanatyam well, actually, I, I, I've done a lot with it. I've been able to share it with a lot of people. And I think anytime you get to expose yourself to anything that's a bit just different or new, it, it just, it expands your mind, expands your heart. Um, it's a, you know, it's a good way to learn. Like even for me, and anytime I get to try any, any new style, anything that's challenging and new, it's good. It's good for us as artists to like spread our wings and just try something, even if it's like a little scary and new, like these are good things. Um, and I'm, again, like, I'm just so thankful that I have these spaces. I have this space, I had the next step where I get to share something that I love. And when I say I love, like, I mean, I love it. I'm the happiest when I'm dancing. Uh, and my, the way that I know how best to express myself, one of the languages is Bharatanatyam. So maybe I can, I don't know, in the future, be able to share it with more people. I'm looking forward to that opportunity. Of course, yes. And we'll display the video of you um at the, the next step as well. Bharatanatyam dancing is a very expressive dance style originating from southern India. I brought in these dancers because they are so expressive and emotional, and that's what we need to bring into our routine. They have these things on their feet, like, that make sounds, so when they move, it just, it adds to it, because they'll be, like, doing little footwork things, and they'll be, like, on the side, so it's just awesome. really, really talented, and it seems that they're really inspiring our whole group. It was such a great idea of Michelle's to bring in the Bharatanatyam dancers. She's really stepping up as dance captain. I, I, I loved it. It was probably like one of my uh, favorite parts of kind of watching the show was <laughs> when I saw that I was, and it, it introduced me to it as well um, before I even met you. So like that was really- Oh, that's really, oh, that's really cool. I didn't think about that because that was a while ago. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, that means a lot that you kind of shared your 
experience with that. And um, yeah, I really hope that more and more people get to, to see that because it really does take so much skill and strength and technique <laughs> to do that. I was, I saw that you were featured, um, a featured guest actually on the hashtag Let Her Speak uh, Tamil Women Rising event alongside uh, the really also beautiful and talented uh, Maitreyi uh, Ramakrishnan. Uh, what does having such an impactful kind of platform to create change for young women mean to you? Oh yeah, um, being part of that event was, it was so exciting and I, 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 I don't think I really realized at the time the kind of reach that it was going to have. Like my 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 kind of my circle has grown exponentially actually ever since that ever since that event i'm i'm really thankful anytime i get the chance to to talk even like with you that this this platform is another one of those great platforms where i'm like i'm so excited to just talk about talk about art talk about the thing that that we that we love that's the thing that you know we one of the things we have in common um and talk about my journey there it's really important for me when i get any of these opportunities to share about the experience i want to be as honest as humanly possible even if honesty isn't glamorous even if um we kind of break the facade of what this what the industry and what the job is i think it's really really important uh for young people or just people in general to be able to hear um from someone experiencing it you know, very honestly, that uh, there's so many highs to this job and there's so many beautiful experiences I can have. Uh, but there, are, there's also like behind the scenes, there's a, there's a lot of hard work, a lot of sleepless nights, a lot of rejection. And I, I, I like being able to talk about that part too, because um, that's the part that uh, not a lot of people always like to talk about because it's not glamorous. Uh, but, but just like any career, any job, they're all the beautiful parts that everybody gets to see, but then there's the unglamorous, hardworking, uh, hard work part. Sorry, uh, that I think we need to talk about more and be and be honest about it. So for anybody wanting to get into the industry or wanting to pursue this, you can really you can really properly weigh your options because you have all the information. And also, I would say uh, ha having a platform like the the like the Let Her Speak event or even being able to talk to you. I think it's really important uh, to be able to, for, for me, uh, to just be an example of a South Asian performer, you know, in, in the community and in the industry right now. I didn't, I didn't grow up thinking that I would ever be an actor. It was always a secret dream in the back of my head, but I would never vocalize it because I didn't see anybody that really looked like me growing up. Uh, on on TV or on stage, so it wasn't a possibility, right? If we and it's this is it. If you can't see it, you can't visualize it. You can't even you can't dream it. It doesn't exist. It's not a possibility. So I didn't really have those examples on on TV or and I was a TV kid. Like I like I, you know, I was, me and my sister like we were totally these kids who grew up in front of the TV. Like I, I had all my TV heroes and idols, but but nobody who I felt like really looked like me or sounded like me or or I could really connect with. So if for people who get to see my work, if if it helps them be able to see a reflection of themselves up on stage or on screen, then I've done my job. That's that's all I want to do is, <laughs> is be able to represent my community and represent people like me. Um, and, and then also share, I want to share, share, share as much of this experience as I can while I'm still on this journey. Um, I love being able to talk with young artists about beginning their journey and just giving really honest advice about, yeah, the highs and lows of the industry. I think it's important. The more we talk and the more we share, the less fear there is. And this is for like anything really, but especially for this industry. I was pretty fearful when I when I started. I didn't really have a ton of guidance. I didn't I didn't know how to break into the industry. I didn't know how this I didn't know how it worked. So for me, I relied on my education. I went to three post-secondary institutes um, within um, for theater, then TV and film, and then um, specifically acting. I relied on my education to get me there. I didn't have connections. I didn't have anybody to really lean on. Uh, but if I can now be that for other people, I'm that, that's yeah. Then I would have I would have done my job on this planet. You know, that, I think that's why I'm here is to support 
as many other young artists and young people as humanly possible. Wow, yeah, definitely very inspiring to hear that from you because it, I think that's, um, you know, we're not alone in that feeling of, oh, this is, it just seems like this really big, like the industry is this mm. huge monster that you can't, you can't really unpack and that only certain people have the key to, you know, and that's, that's, a, I think the main issue with going into arts uh, for a lot of young young people, um, especially those that don't see themselves on screen nearly enough. Uh, are there any kind of upcoming projects that you wanted to share and uh, how can we support you? Oh, oh well, you're, you're, you're already supporting me right now. You're just having, having the conversation, being able to like share this morning. This is, I mean, this is, this is it. This is why I do what I do. Uh, but I, yeah, um, I'm in my, again, my fourth season at the Shaw Festival and I'll be performing all summer and fall in Charlie's Aunt, which is this great little, great little farce. And I have this cute little, cute little part um, playing Ella Delahaye in that. Um, this past year, during the pandemic, I was lucky enough to do a lot of um, like online digital art and digital theater. So, and some of them are still available to, to like go and like download and listen to. So uh, a few months ago, I recorded uh, an audio play with Factory Theater. Um, it was part of their You Can't Get There From Here series. There were five audio plays in the series and I was episode number one. Actually, it's called Sisters and I recorded it with my real life sister. She's also a Mirabella. She's also an actor, <laughs> actor, singer, dancer. We that's what we do. Um, so, um, so we got to, yeah, we got to record that together um, re remotely. We recorded it remotely and it was edited and put together. And that was, God, that was just the coolest experience. Um, and that's available. It's a, it's a free download on, um, on any podcasting or pod podcast platform. So Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever wherever else you get you, you get your podcasts um that one's available to listen to now i it, i think it's available for free for six months from when it premiered and i don't think we've hit the six months yet uh this past year i also worked again with judith thompson as her um associate director for a piece called children speak so we got it was like I'm gonna get the number wrong. I wanna say 14, I think it might have been less, but we got um, these kids together, they auditioned and we worked with them on Zoom for I think about six months. And we pulled their their real life stories and Judith took, it's basically a verbatim play about these kids and like their hopes and dreams and how they're dealing with the pandemic. And and they tell, they like, they write songs and poems and raps and, and bits and anyways it's a play about kids for kids that i got to help craft and be a part of it's called children speak again and it's also available for free as a download on any podcasting uh, uh platform so um if anybody wants to go listen to those you can go you can go listen to those um yeah i i'm really looking forward to what the future brings i know um, the industry has been devastated by the pandemic and I know it's a very difficult time for actors and performers and artists and I'm just thankful that I I'm still working uh, right now. It it's, it's a huge blessing. Like, I don't take it for, for granted. I don't take it lightly at all. I know how incredibly lucky I am to say that I am working right now and I was also able to work this past year. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I don't know what comes after Shaw. I don't know what the future holds, but but I'm excited and I'll let you know, I'll let you know when, when, whenever it happens, but I, um, I just want to keep doing work that I believe in and work that I'm passionate about. And I want to work with good people. That's it. I want to work with people who inspire me and people who are kind and create good atmospheres. I don't know. I don't know. Whatever the next thing is, I'll, I'll let you know. <laughs> Perfect. Well, that was amazing. And uh, thank you, Gabriella, because you really you do so much for the, the people in, in Niagara. And, you know, I love watching you perform mm -hmm. and um, it inspires uh, me and, you know, my friends who, who are big fans uh, and being proud to be a Canadian. You know, um, you've definitely um, uh, just kind of shown the way of, you know, fulfilling your dreams and uh, 
uplifting others along the way with your journey. So thank you so much for, for being on the show. And uh, it's been great having you. Oh, thank you so much for having me as well. This is, again, anytime I get to talk about the craft and like meet other young artists, this is, this is why I do what I do. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Bye. <laughs> And thank you so very much for watching today's episode of Un Momento with Isabella Milano. I appreciate all of your support so very much and I love you all so much. So remember to dream big and reach for the stars. Till next time.